I was just really taken aback by Tony Jefferson's ability to like just break things down. Like his, he is cerebral, man. He, yeah, the way he speaks, he speaks with, he speaks a lot of things with, uh, he speaks intention into a lot of things. And mm -hmm. he talked about how he was scouting for Baltimore last year, but he was doing in season scouting, checking out all the teams. So that's going to be interesting seeing uh, how he, approaches you know getting derwin and alohi and himself ready this season assuming he makes the squad he's feeling super motivated to get into that 53 um wa definitely wants to be on the team wants to play and says his body's feeling fresh i always cringe when i hear players say that because it just we've heard it so many times and then <laughs> something happens but you know in the in the cut-ups that there were of jefferson you know taking some reps and and training he looked really spry man and you know maybe with him not being in a starting role he the the lack of starting reps and play time does help his body continue to recover or, or not break down and he's able to be impactful in a rotational role but um but man his leadership ability and the way he talks like you can tell you want that guy in your room and it, eventually he did so well with scouting. They actually moved him from in season to having him scout for their um, upcoming draft. So just, uh, I was just really impressed and really excited to have that kind of leadership. And it also makes you kind of bummed that we haven't targeted guys like that in the past. It's like, man, Tom Telesco, if you would have just learned from how many like, guys we just kept stashing away and hoping they'd eventually develop like a storm norton or somebody along those lines and instead of just hanging on to these guys that you know you could stash on the practice squad they'll probably stay there you know and they're not yeah. going to get stolen people rarely swipe from the practice squad um and bring in guys that can help teach up the young guys we have in front of them and be decent effective backstops if we do have injuries. So I don't know, yeah. like you, I know you've looked into Tony Jefferson as a player and done some scouting on him. So what are you thinking, Garrett? I, I just, I, I think that you hit the nail on the head with his, his brain behind the game, his, the way he can dissect an offense and the way he cuts up the field in his mind and he, he delivers that. And yeah, he's been a journeyman. He's been on the Cardinals, the Ravens, the Niners, you know, back on the Ravens to the Giants and now us. He has experience. He has seen. You know, there's not an offense you can show him that he hasn't seen, right? Yeah. And so not that Alohi and Derwin need this, but this is that reinforcement. This is like you said. You said he's a backstop. Like if one of them, God forbid, they go down, we have somebody who's competent, and it's not going to be a supreme drop-off to like the JT Woods of the world, who I think is great, but he's got to work on his mechanics. But also, guess what? you got Tony Jefferson there to guide you a little bit. you got you got three mentors now, Alohi, Derwin, and Tony. So it, there's not a benefit that is underweighed by the that by him it, it being bad that he's there. Like I don't see anything that's bad for him to be on this team. It's training camp. It's a, essentially a free trial run with his you know one point two one one million or yeah one point two one million dollar one year deal. He's got the scheme fit. He knows his defense. I just don't see how it could be a bad thing. And if he makes the fifty three, it's going to be a great season for our secondary. Yeah. And something, a little trick for fans to look out for that might happen with Tony because he's a perfect candidate for it. Uh, don't be surprised if he doesn't make the 53 in week one mm -hmm. is stashed on the practice squad because of the vested veteran rule. If Tony's on the roster for the week one game, his entire salary becomes guaranteed. So uh, for, for that, for this year. So there's a very good chance if if he's on kind of the bubble with the 53, they might opt to retain one of their U uh, UDFA safeties, um, keep them on the 53 for week one, let Tony go back down to the practice squad just for that one week, and then swap them in week two. And that way, yep. if they feel like throughout the season, if Tony does have some issues, if he uh, if he's you know kind of on the tertiary, it does need to float between the practice squad and the active roster. They have the flexibility to do that without taking on the cap hit. That is basically what happened with Christian Covington a couple of years ago and Brandon Fajico, yeah. um, which, you know, 
we did, people didn't really know about at the time and how that worked. Um, and there's just freaking out every week it happened. They're like, what are we doing? <laughs> well, and, and do you remember? It was one of my biggest pet peeves 